All right, guys, we're back with another What the Fitness. What the f And this week, we're going to. T Just kidding. I know we have really been relying on TikTok for a long time for our content. I'm sorry, but it's just so easy. But this week we go back to our stomping grounds of YouTube for our content. And what do we have here? Ask the RD in the title. Oh my goodness. So this video is actually published by MyFitnessPal. I really hope that this isn't gonna be bad, but I feel like it's gonna be bad. Um, and the title is, how much protein can our bodies absorb per meal? <sighs> Hi there, I'm registered dietitian nutritionist Whitney English of Whitney ERD. Welcome to Ask CRD. Today's question is, how much protein can our bodies absorb during a single meal, during a single day? We've all seen bodybuilders showcasing their perfectly meal prepped containers of lean chicken breast and claiming that you need massive amounts of protein to build muscle. Here's the thing, too much of anything is good for nothing. Unlike carbohydrates and fat, our bodies don't have a way to store excess protein. So that's actually true. So, so far she's, she's correct. We don't have a way to store excess protein. Some people have argued with me and said, well, you can store it in muscle. That's like saying I'm going to build a house as a storage form for wood. You don't build a house so that then you can tear it down later. That's, that's not why you do it. Uh, so this first part, at least her first claim is actually correct. And studies show that we can only utilize about 20 to 30 grams maximum at a time for muscle building and other bodily functions. That means that anything in excess of this amount is either A, burned for energy, inefficiently I may add, or B, converted to fat and stored in our adipose tissue. All right, so this isn't the worst claims I've ever seen in my life. Um, but we got to kind of back up a little bit. So first off, I will say 20 to 30 grams probably maxes out the muscle protein synthetic response for the majority of people. And that's probably what she's referring to. However, there are some meta regressions and meta analyses as well as a few RCTs that suggest the amount of protein that maximizes muscle building may actually be a decent amount higher than that on a per meal basis. Now, why is that if 20, 30 grams maxes out muscle protein synthesis? Well, first off, it depends on the source of protein, like vegetable proteins or uh, plant-based proteins usually require much more protein from them in order to get the same response compared to an animal-based protein. And then you have like your upper tier proteins like whey protein, which is high in leucine and you know, 20 grams of it will probably max out muscle protein synthesis. But the building of muscle tissue is the balance between protein synthesis and protein degradation. Now, protein synthesis can be measured relatively easily. That's what I did for my PhD. PhD. So that's a pretty involved process, but it's doable. Muscle protein degradation is many times over more difficult to assess than muscle protein synthesis. In fact, so much so that most researchers don't even try and bother. We just measure muscle protein synthesis, then we kind of hide our heads in the sand and assume muscle protein degradation doesn't matter. So you can build muscle through one of two ways. You can increase muscle protein synthesis or you can decrease muscle protein degradation or you can do a little bit of both. Now the problem is uh, if you decrease degradation too much, there's evidence it actually decreases synthesis. So these two processes are kind of tied together. But because some of these regressions and meta-analyses and studies have shown that it might be a higher amount of protein that actually maxes out muscle building, it's likely that there are some things going on with muscle protein degradation that we haven't documented and don't necessarily understand. So I wouldn't say that that's all that's used for muscle building at a meal. It's probably somewhat close, but we just don't know that for sure yet. Now her point that the excess is oxidized for energy and inefficiently so. True, protein is a more inefficient source of energy, but that's actually a good thing when it comes to fat loss. If you have an energy source that requires more energy to get the energy out of it, that means that you're burning more body fat. That means that it's thermogenic, and we see that with protein. It has a higher thermic effect of food. So if body composition and fat loss are something that are important to you, then having a higher protein diet actually can be great because one, it's more satiating than carbohydrate or fat, depending on the food. And also, 
it is going to increase your thermic effect of food, which could lead to, you know, 100 or 200 calories more per day output, depending on how much protein you're eating. Now, her point that you can store the excess as body fat, yes and no. Yes, if you overconsume calories, even in protein, you can store body fat. However, it is unlikely that the fat you store began as protein. So protein, much like carbohydrate, doesn't really get stored in adipose. For example, in a study where they overfed women by about 50% more calories than their maintenance calories, they found that these women stored about 280 grams of fat per day. Less than 2% of that came from dietary carbohydrate. It was almost exclusively from dietary fat. So how can eating too many carbs make you fat? Because we know in studies where they overfeed carbs, people become just as fat as overfeeding fats when calories are equated. Well, what carbohydrates do is provide a caloric cushion for the calories you eat from fat to be stored as fat. Because when you eat carbohydrate, you have to oxidize it for the most part. Since you're burning carbohydrate, you're more likely to store that fat you ate as fat. If you eat enough protein to create a calorie surplus, what happens is since you've got to oxidize that excess protein, that creates a caloric cushion for excess fat to be stored in adipose tissue. So, so far this ain't the worst thing in the world I've ever seen. It's, I'm, I guess I would say I'm being a little bit pedantic with my criticisms, but being specific is important because otherwise people get the wrong idea. The maximum amount of protein your body can use, however, may be much less than this, depending on your unique factors and the amount of exercise you're doing. While there's no threshold for protein use over the course of the day, it's recommended that people aim to consume between 10 and 35% of their calories from protein. Any more than this? Exercise usually increases the amount of protein that you can utilize for muscle building. It doesn't decrease it, so that's, that's pretty wrong. This is kind of a MyFitnessPal thing, like having your percentages of calories from different macronutrients. I actually hate percentages because, for example, we know that the amount of protein that is needed to maximize muscle retention on a deficit is greater than when you're in a surplus. So if you're at, let's say, 20% protein and you cut your calories from 3,000 per day to 2,000 per day, so your protein goes down by 50% even though you should be eating more of it? That's why percentages just don't make sense. Protein requirements should be based on grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. And we know that right around 2.2 grams per kilogram of lean body mass is a really good place for you to be at, or the old one gram per pound rule. Any more than this, and you'll likely crowd out important food groups and miss out on vital nutrients. That's not necessarily true either. Additionally, eating too much protein has also been linked to an increased risk of chronic diseases like diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa as has eating too many fats and carbohydrates. What is the common thread? Eating too much, not protein. Protein is not gonna give you, di of all the macronutrients that are gonna give you diabetes. Yeah, it's protein. Protein's gonna give you the diabetes. No, no, no. In fact, we see in studies that high protein diets actually tend to help with management of type two diabetes. So that, I'm sorry, is, nonsense. Sure, if you eat too much protein, create a caloric surplus, um, yeah, I guess you could become type 2 diabetic. But people aren't becoming type 2 diabetic and obese because they're overeating chicken breasts. Let's get real here. Best bet, eat a moderate amount of protein, about 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, again, depending on your individual factors like age and activity level. Yeah, so 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram has actually been shown to be uh, less than is optimal for building lean body mass and for retaining lean body mass during periods of catabolism. So I disagree. Also, aim to spread out your protein intake throughout the day and always balance your meals with a good source of complex carbohydrates and unsaturated fat. I'm Whitney of Whitney ERD. Thanks for watching. All right, so overall, not the worst video I've ever seen, but I really would expect better from uh, a registered dietitian, more context, more nuance, but who knows, maybe my fitness pal did only gave her two minutes to, to talk about this stuff. So could be worse, but hopefully I provided some education for you guys. I didn't even talk about this. So this whole idea that there's a certain amount of protein that you can absorb at a meal, unless protein has some kind of inherent characteristic, unless the protein source has an inherent characteristic that limits its bioavailability. 
For example, plant-based proteins that are bound up in the fibrous plant material are, are less bioavailable. You will absorb all the protein you eat, virtually all of it. Yeah, you lose a little bit in your stool, but if you, if you couldn't absorb more than 30 grams at a meal, imagine what would happen if you ate a 200 gram steak, which contains 60 grams, 50, 60 grams of protein. You would just have massive diarrhea every time you ate past that threshold because your body does not allow undigested, unabsorbed material to just sit in your GI. It draws water in there to dilute it and then you shit it out. So this idea that there's a cap on protein absorption is false. It's been false for the last 20 years when I've been debunking it. It will be false for the next forever. So can we please stop saying this shit? How much protein can I absorb in a meal? You're gonna absorb pretty much all of it. The real question you're asking is how much will be utilized for muscle building? We know from the meta-analyses and meta-regressions that Somewhere around the good old 2.2-ish grams per kilogram of lean body mass, it's pretty good. If you want to consume more, you can. There don't really appear to be big downsides to consuming up to 3 and 3.3 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. So, if you like more protein, have more protein. It's probably not going to help you build that much more muscle, but it's also probably not going to hurt you. Alright guys, if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm out.